Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay welcome back so what we were discussing we were discussing about supply we already defined what is supply uh, let me remind you again uh, like demand uh, supply is uh, everything what we will tell demand or supply in economics it should be supported by the person who is desiring to demand or desiring to get supply okay or, uh, deliver the supply okay it should be backed by or supported by his or her capacity okay so in that way what is the supply supply is my willingness to deliver something some product or some service uh, goods or service whatever it is but supported by my capacity right so in that way uh, exactly the like demands uh, counterpart if we want to have a supply schedule means alternative uh, prices are there and at different prices what is the potential quantity i am being a potential supplier what will be my deliverable quantities if i have a table like say let us let us let us try to represent that by a table suppose say this side is price and this side is quantity supplied so when price is zero i don't want to supply anything when say price is 1, say rupee 1 per unit of that commodity, I do not want to again supply anything. Okay. When it is 2, perhaps I want to supply 1 unit. When it is 3, I want to supply 2 unit. When it is say price equals to 4, that time I want to supply say 3 unit and so on this way. So, if you if you see the supply, this is called this tabulated pair of numbers is called supply schedule supply schedule supply schedule okay so uh, if so if you if you see this uh, pair of price and corresponding quantity supply this pair of numbers you will see that there is a positive relationship in the uh, this uh, price and quantity supplied alternative price and quantity supplied combination why this positive relationship that is the usual who are the producer who are the potential supplier that is that they are uh, they are behavior how they behave in the market right you can remember that people uh, respond to incentive that principle one of one of the 10 principles uh, was that uh, people re respond to in respond to incentive right so that time we discussed that apple example okay so who are the apple consumers if price in the market increases apple's price of course we are talking about customers will try to consume less or purchase less amount of apple but what the producers are of apple what they will do they will try to supply more they will try to produce more to get their earning more than the earlier right so basically price increases or one increment in price will be act as an incentive to the suppliers of that same product can they will be incentivized to deliver uh, deliver more product in the market or supply more product in the market now the question if you see that when price there is no price price is zero okay quantity supplied is zero so when price is zero i don't want to supply anything i am not at all incentivized when price becomes one unit per per unit one rupee per unit of that quantity uh, commodity i still don't get enough incentive why i don't get although the price is rupee 1 because perhaps the amount of cost of production I have to incur to produce that commodity that 1 rupee per unit of that commodity is not sufficient for me to deliver that product that is even when uh, rupee 1 say rupee 1 per unit of commodity that is the price I do not want to deliver anything deliver anything ok. When rupees 2 per unit ok say rupees 2 per unit that is the price when that time I am willing to deliver something. So, we are getting one sense that perhaps here who is the producer, his or her cost of production is something at either rupees 2 per unit or less than that because a producer he or she will uh, 
uh, will be willing to keep some profit margin right. So, look at here although here price is something positive that was not enough to meet up my cost of production or the producers cost of production that is why even at uh, rupee 1. So, he or she is not willing to deliver any commodity when it is 2 then it, he is trying to deliver when it is 3 he is trying to increase even more 4 he is trying to increase even more and so on right. And if we plot this uh, price quantity combination in a diagram, so we will definitely get this kind of say suppose this is and quantity supplied we will measure in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and we will get this kind of upward sloping line it may be straight line it may not be straight line the kind of numbers we have taken as a demonstration you are getting a sense that it is straight line ok. So, whatever the supply curve we will get it will have some vertical intercept because un unless there is a minimum threshold level of price because price you are measuring vertical axis there will not be any supply right. So, so, perhaps this is 2 at the 2 then 1 we are starting with right or it can be 1 also 1 it is 0 because at this particular point quantity supplied is 0 only from where this supply car say A B suppose the supply car A point A point is the A B line where it is uh, cutting the vertical axis right that is A point right. So, that is at that point what is that some vertical positive intercept is there, but co horizontal co uh, coordinate is 0. So, perhaps that is 1 point and perhaps this is 1 unit of quantity and this is 2 right. So, I can tell rather this is 1 and this is 2 ok. Let me let me just write these things in F phrase. ok this is 1, this is 2, this is 1 right this is a b ok. So, at when price equals to rupee 1 at this point point a that time quantity supplied is 0, when price equals to rupees 2 that time quantity supplied is 1, when price equals to rupees 3 that time quantity supplied is 2. So, this is 3, this is 2 and so on. So, in that way if we want to plot this supply schedule into a diagram measuring one of the variables in one axis another variable in other axis we will get a curve. This curve is called supply curve ok. Supply curve is nothing but the diagrammatical representation of the supply schedule tabulated price quantity supplied those numbers or those pair of numbers right that supplies. Now, uh, we will discuss what are the factors that determine this supply ok. So, obviously, price of the commodity whose supply we are talking about commodity good or service whatever it is whose supply we are talking about its price is an important determinant as we told as we, we discussed many times about that up apple uh, supply apple producer their potential supply in market price increases they will try to increase their supply and all so many times we have told. So, definitely if price increases it will incentivize the producers. So, as price increase quantity supplied will increase. So, most important factor here is the price of the commodity whose supply we are talking about. Now, can we think of what other factors that determines uh, supply, supply of a commodity? Definitely cost of production ok, definitely cost of production how much what we uh, the producer what how much cost he is incurring he or of course, she is incurring to produce that particular commodity accordingly will be able to supply a commodity or not at the uh, alternative price uh, uh, possible price levels ok. So, cost of production of course, one factor important determinant of supply anything else of course, technology using which technological know how using which we are transforming factors of production or we are combining factors of production into some good or service production. You know that we have told that so many factors of production and we can club them into four different categories land, labor, capital and organization. So, those factors of production we are amalgamating, we are we are combining together ok and we are getting some goods or service as produced right. So, so uh, production possibility frontier for a country we have discussed. So, that time we told that suppose this is the production possibility frontier one year ok, 
for some given level of uh, input vector whatever is available for in that country in that society. Suppose tomorrow same amount of input vector is available ok, but production possibility frontier having this kind of. So, earlier say C D was the production possibility frontier, yesterday's production possibility frontier, today's for same society's production possibility frontier becomes C E ok. Suppose we are measuring say output y 1 and this side output 2. So, two commodity they are producing that society is producing one is denoted by y 1 another is denoted by y 2 ok. So, in that way so, when we are getting a outward shift of the production possibility frontier of that society from C D to C E look C D this production possibility frontier when we are getting there is some amount of uh, resources is available in the society using that resources what is the alternative combination of y 1 and y 2 that society can produce that is the boundary you know that is bounded by CD, CD line CD this kind of concave line ok. Next period same amount of uh, factors of production are available in the society, but using that same amount of factors of production that society is going to uh, able to produce more amount of y 1 now, but the same amount of uh, y 2 as earlier. So, how we in can interpret we have already told this we can interpret that technological innovation has taken place in the production of y 1 commodity, but there is no technological innovation happens or uh, uh, has taken place for the production of the second commodity y 2 commodity ok. So, so basically this technological innovation what we are referring technological know how using the knowledge level the knowledge level what we are using to convert our factors of production or resources into some production of some goods or service right. So, obviously, in this society earlier total supply could be this much of y 1, now this society's total supply can be this much of y 1 under the Ceteris Paribas condition. So, definitely how much quantity supply will be there or what will how much supply of that commodity will be there in the society that depends on what is the technological knowledge level, technological know how or status of the art of the technological knowledge available in that society right. We are discussing here what we are discussing what is the factors that determine service and the supply of a commodity or supply of a service right. So, we as we told let me repeat again or sum up those again. First important factor of course, the commodity or service which supply we are talking about its price, its market price that is the first important thing. Other factors of course, cost of production what producers are, is incurring to produce that commodity ok. Of course, that cost of production depends on price of the factors of production right. We told that four factors of production they are remuneration also we told no lands remuneration is rent. Uh, labor's remuneration is called wage, uh, capital's uh, remuneration is called interest and who is the organizer or who is the entrepreneur, his or her remuneration is profit right. So, these are the uh, of course, the what is the price of these factors are there in the market, if those prices increases increase then definitely total cost of production that producer has to incur more as a result producer need more price ok to, to be able to deliver that, that product in the market or supply that product in the market. So, definitely what are the factors that determine supply own price, price of that commodity, price of the factors of production and as a result total cost of production ok. Technological know how ok using which this commodity is produced right anything else of course, expectation about the future. Uh, yesterday uh, or in, in our in our past lecture we have discussed what are the factors determine the demand there also we told expectation about the future ok. Now, let me I will give an example you will see that how expectation about the future determine one single example determine the supply and demand in a particular situation. See in India you know that uh, petrol product no petrol diesel and all uh, when their price uh, is changing in the in, in the society right. Usually that takes place due to some government declaration right. Say government is declaring today that today midnight after today midnight means tomorrow morning onwards petrol price will increase or petrol diesel all price will increase say today it is my price is say 80 rupee, rupee is 80 per liter ok. 
tomorrow morning onwards or after today's midnight it will be rupees say 82 per liter. So, what will happen? People who have the vehicles, two wheeler, four wheeler, whatever, okay, vehicles, petrol or diesel, these are the essential commodity for that vehicle, it is these are fuel to run that vehicle, right. So, you will see that suppose today midnight onwards that petrol price will increase, right. Today evening you will see the long queue in the petrol pumps, okay. So, the potential customers who are going to purchase petrol or this fuel from the market, they know that tomorrow morning that price per liter will be more 2 rupee extra, okay. So, they are, tried, uh, they are trying to purchase as much as possible in the today's price, okay, in their vehicle, okay. This is the one side of incentive where potential customers are responding, okay. Also, you can see that in the petrol pump owners, okay, they can do some illegal activity. What they can do? Although some petrol may be available in their reservoir, okay, they can close down quickly, say maybe 8 o'clock in the evening, okay, they are telling that no, no more stock is there. What is their incentive? They are telling lie. But what is the incentive? Incentive is that if they can save some petrol, whatever is there, that they will tomorrow morning they will sell in a 2 rupees extra per liter, right, that is the incentive. So, look at here how the expectation about the future is determining both demand and supply. Expectation about future is here, expectation is that it is known to everybody all the associated stakeholders, both customers and uh, sellers all know that tomorrow morning price will be 2 rupee extra per liter, okay. So, that, that information about the future tomorrow, no, future that is incentivizing the customers in certain way, producers in certain other way, just the opposite way, right. So, expectation about the future also determine the supply and look at here that this, this who are the owner of the petrol pumps, okay. Although as I told it may happen that some of them, not all of them are uh, this kind of people, but some of them may do that, no. Although it reserve uh, their storage, some reserve is there, they will tell them no, 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 it is, it is over today is no, no more stock, tomorrow you come, they can do that, okay. So, as a result, if they behave in that way, supply will come down, right. So, that is the thing, that is the thing. So, we are discussing here, of course, you see that here the factors that can determine supply, two, three factors which are quanti easily quantifiable. Of course, the one price of that commodity is quanti quantifiable price of the factors of productions are quantifiable and hence the total cost of production is also quantifiable. But other things, technological know-how, then this expectation about the future, all these things, it is very difficult to quantify or measure uh, extent of those things, right? It is very difficult to measure. But in any case, all of us as a, as a, as a student of economics, we should know about these factors. Another factor may be here, kind of atmosphere, uh, kind of atmosphere we are living. Okay, that atmosphere sometimes determine our demand or supply as well, right. Like say the some level of temperature is there around these days, uh, maybe in one city say maybe Delhi, average temperature may be say uh, 25 degree centigrade, suppose, okay. Suddenly for some reason, some heat wave or whatever, tomorrow this suddenly pick up say uh, 30 degree centigrade, right. It is it's suddenly heat is increased, right. So, what will happen perhaps you will see that demand for a ice cream or cold drinks, this kind of specific kind of product may suddenly increase because the day is very hotter relative to or compared to the usual expected kind of heat or expected kind of temperature people or people expect, okay. So, so the kind of surrounding, kind of atmosphere within which we are living that also in certain cases that also determine demand and supply. Okay. So, that is the thing. So, this is the demand and this is the supply uh, and uh, demand curve and supply curve. Now, let us just combine whatever whenever we are we are talking about demand curve, it is about say suppose individual demand curve. I am a pro potential customer in the market, what is my demand curve? Similarly, another person say person X, uh, uh, he is there, he is a pro producer of a commodity. Okay. 
what is his supply curve. So, when we are talking about my demand curve or that producer supply curve, we are talking about one individual uh, customer's demand curve or one individual supplier's uh, supply curve, right. Now, from individual demand curve, how we can get the market demand curve? So, market is basically a combination of so many individual uh, potential customers or individual customers, right. Let us go to the another slide. So, suppose we, we are we are talking say suppose uh, in, in, in the market what we are talking about in that market only one customer is there, only one customer, ok. So, if that is the case suppose that so we are measuring quantity demanded quantity supplied both in the horizontal axis and price in the vertical axis because demand curve and supply curve both will we will draw here ok so in this market if only one customer is there and that customer's individual demand curve is suppose this say ab ab this line so we can definitely tell in this market ab is the individual demand curve also AB is the market demand curve because in this market only one individual is there ok. In real life certain types of market is there where only one individual is there. We will, we will discuss that man, that kind of market is called monopsony, monopsony single buyers market ok. We will, we will discuss when we will de demonstrate alternative type of uh, market no that time we will discuss. Uh, all these other type of market also. You people know that when only one seller is there that market is called monopoly, right. Perhaps uh, some of you may heard already about this terminology monopoly, right. Monopsony is the just the opposite where only one uh, buyer is there. So, the question is what we are discussing now? We are discussing we want to reach market demand curve and market supply curve. So, definitely we have to aggregate the individual demand curve. Suppose in this market two individuals are there, two potential customers are there. One customer's demand curve is AB, another customer's demand curve says CD and no more customers are there in this market, ok. So, if we want to find out the market demand curve in this, uh, in this market, so what will be the market demand curve? Definitely we have to take aggregate of these two demand curves. Ok. Aggregate in which sense? Horizontal aggregation here we have to take. Why horizontal aggregation? Because quantity demanded we have measured in the horizontal axis. How we will interpret that? Ok, fine. If this is the price level, say O k, this point is k, O k is the price level, what will be uh, first person? So, this is person x and this is person y, suppose his demand curve ok. So, at ok level of price what will be the demand for uh, that commodity whose demand we are talking about uh, these two demand curves for a particular commodity or particular service right. So, x person x how much uh, quantity demanded he or she will generate definitely 0 because highest possible price what that person x can tolerate that is that OA amount. At ok price what is the second person's demand? a quantity demanded again it is 0 because highest price what second person or y person y can tolerate is OC. So, definitely if price is ok market demand will be 0 uh, market quantity demanded will be 0 plus 0. So, 0 ok. In that way now if you little bit reduce price until OA point at OA point what is the market demand curve because the person x the quantity demanded is 0 percent y in any case 0. If price is this thing say suppose O k prime where k prime lies between c and a point ok. Then what will be the market demand curve? At that price this much quantity demanded by individual x, but 0 amount by individual y. So, definitely that will be the market demand because that much plus 0 ok. At this price whatever will be the market demand curve? or uh, market demand qu quantity demanded definitely this much by the person x and person y still 0 ok. So, I can tell until this point suppose this is c prime point. So, a c prime is the segment of individual demand curve that demand curve is coming from the person x and that is also market demand curve. 
but if price goes down even further that time market demand curve will be this kind. So, A C, C prime this king point is C prime we are talking about. So, A C prime suppose D prime this side is going. So, we are getting this this kind of demand curve that is the market demand curve. Why there is a king here and why this is more flatter than any of these two? Because at this price what is the market demand? This much quantity demanded by person X and that much quantity demanded by person Y right. This much by person X and that much by person Y. So, we have to sum those two, two because these two are only the uh, customers in the market. So, if you sum these two perhaps we will land little bit more here. Okay. So, in that way with a demonstration we are trying to introduce how we can reach market demand curve using horizontal summation or horizontal aggregation of individual demand curves depending on how many individuals are there in that market. This is about the demand curve exactly the supply curve will be exactly the same way the same panel suppose we are to make this diagram little bit appraise. So, say suppose this is supply curve for one person and this is supply curve of the another person okay. and these two persons are uh, only the two suppliers in that market. So, what will be the market? So, these two are the individual supply curve how we can reach the market supply curve exactly the same way we have to take horizontal aggregation of these two individual supply curves. I am repeating horizontal aggregation because horizontal axis we are measuring quantity both quantity demanded as well as quantity supplied. So, we have to take horizontal aggregation. Okay. So, at this price definitely any price below this level there will not be any supply. At this level price of course, again there will not be any supply, but at this price level what will be the supply? Okay, quantity supplied will be this much by one of them and another person cannot supply anything. So, so this green segment this green segment will be not only one portion of individual supply car that is also market supply car. But after this price level, if price level is here, what will be market supply car? Quantity supplied by one person is this much and quantity supplied by the another person is this much. So, market supply will be definitely this much plus this much, right. So, this to some perhaps somewhere here. So, those in that way if we get all possible alternative prices what is the sum of these two supplies. So, perhaps you will get this this kind of supply line. Okay. So, supply so, so this this kind of one king line this this kind of market supply curve if the two individuals are there if three individuals are there exactly the third one also you had in that way. So, what we are discussing here how we can reach the demand curve and supply curve both for the entire market using the individual demand curve and individual supply curve by taking their horizontal aggregation, horizontal summation. Okay. Why we are interested to know that market demand curve and market supply curve? Because the interaction of market demand and market supply forces will determine the equilibrium price in any market at which that commodity or that service should be transacted in the market. Right? We told market is a good way one of, one of the 10 principles was there no market is a good way to allocate resources. Right? So, we used to see Adam Smith told market as invisible hand. We used to see that when you are going to the market, you see that some price is available already. Okay, the sellers are telling that this product, uh, this much rupees per kg or this much rupees per meter of cloth or something like that, right? So, who determines that price? It is not only producer, it is not only customers, it is this demand supply opposite to opposite forces, they are interaction and that interaction through market mechanism that interaction silently operating in the background. Okay. That is why Adam Smith turned this market as in, invisible hand. right? So, through that mechanism what is the price level at which that commodity or that service will be transacted in the market that is determined. So, to determine that we have to first know 
what is the market demand curve and what is the market supply curve. That is why from the individual demand curve and individual supply curve, we discuss how we can reach the market demand curve and market supply curve. Now, using this market demand curve and market supply curve, we will try to understand how equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity of the commodity will be determined in any market. Okay? That we will discuss in our next lecture.